Hey y'all, we have made it to day 14 of our 21 day challenge. Whoa, even me just saying that, didn't quite realize it. This is the greater challenge. And yep, we have made it to day 14. And um, I'm just so grateful. God has challenged us to change the way that we think, change the way that we speak so we can change our results. And I promise you, I am seeing the fruit of this thing already. And there is no telling where we will be this time next week. If you're just joining us, I encourage you to go back and look at each day. And the reason I say each day is because God has been unfolding this thing. He's been clearing our vision. Lord, the whole 2020 thing. <laughs> That, that clear vision, oh my gosh, y'all. Yeah, God is doing it. And I encourage you, go back because there might be a word that God starts talking to us about. And then as the days progress, he just begins to show us more and more what he's meaning for our lives. So I just really encourage you, go back and watch it all. We are determined that we're going to think greater, speak greater, and see greater. And that seeing that we're talking about is what's being manifested from our own lives. Um, God, had be, he started talking last week about how that thinking, that's our mind. I mean, I know we know it, but he's really begun to take us deeper into that thinking part of it because he told us that that's where the work comes in that's where our work comes in is in the thinking process and in the um in the speaking those are the areas that he's committed to us and he's committed to doing the end part okay so, um, I was talking to God this morning, just really thanking him for what he's been doing and, and how he's been breaking this thing down to us. And I heard him saying again, just slow it down so you can get it right. So I'm committed to doing what he's telling me to do. Uh, and right now he's still focusing on our ground, on my ground. He's still focusing on that. Um, and he said that it's time to deal with the trauma and time to deal with the pain. When he started talking about our ground, and I told y'all last week that he said something to me about making sure it's, I need to kill the weeds. I need to kill all the weeds in my garden. That's what he said a, a week ago, Sunday. He said, I need to kill. He, he didn't he didn't say treat. He didn't say get. He said, I need to kill all the weeds in my garden. And so that's that thing started me to really this this weekend, yesterday and today, I've been seeking him about what he means. And he he pointed at the trauma that's in our lives. And for those of us who are Christians. A lot of things, well, people in general, people in general don't deal with trauma well. We, especially Christians, are, we're made to feel like you get over it, get over it. Y'all, I think that's some, I've said it in the past, they need to just get over it. I need to get over it. Y'all. Yes, we are overcomers, <laughs> but y'all, there are some things that we've just got to stop and deal with. We've got to stop and deal with. And I'm noticing that every major thing God has ever delivered me from had a root. It, it wasn't something, even if it was in my lineage, even if it was in my family, there was a starting point inside me where Satan 
decided, okay, let's get this thing to rolling. And so God is saying, hey, slow down. I need, I need your ground right before I drop this next seed. I need your ground right. So um, he says, time to stop glossing over stuff and trying to build on top of mess. Because as we have entered this new era, this new decade, I've heard preacher after preacher, and and my within myself, I I come in agreement with what they're saying. There are choices and decisions that we will make in 2020 that will affect not only this year, but the rest of this decade. And the rest of our lives based on what we do in this year. Okay. Um, so I got to deal with what's in my ground. I look back and I'm just going to tell you part of my story. Hopefully as I'm speaking, you will be able to, to connect the dots in your own story. So I look back at old pictures of myself and I see that when I was really young, there was this glimmer in my eyes. There was this confidence. My eyes sparkled and reflected so much light and love. And then I see other pictures. Other pictures where it is remarkably sad. My eyes look so dead, um, so dull. And it is not, I'm, I'm not throwing off anything on anybody in my family. I love God. And I know that everything that has ever happened to me, God has worked for my good. Okay. So I'm not blaming anybody. None of that. I'm simply telling you my story. This is my truth. Okay. So I do, I wonder how nobody could see what was going on. And I think it's just a matter sometimes of um, us kind of becoming nose blind to what's around us and being so consumed in ourselves. One thing the Lord told me last year, I think, is that a lot of what I have felt the negative effects of, feels like it wasn't even about you. <laughs> People, everybody's in process and we're all in different spaces and places and we say things or do things that we would never, ever seek to hurt anybody. But it just comes out of where we are. And so, so much of what has happened to us we had nothing to do with how we were treated, but the enemy still took that thing and um, decided to use it against us, okay? Um, when I look back at those pictures and I see my eyes, I think about, whoa, it's one thing to see through, you know, to, for, for a room to be dark and you'd have to try to find the light but what about when you're the room like I started thinking when lighting is bad from the inside nothing looks the way it really appears and so that's where Satan tries to wreak havoc he will put those puzzle pieces out there and he will make up this picture that is really not true but your flesh, um, the thoughts we have, all of that begins to work with what he's saying. And it makes us believe that he's right. So um, I think I mentioned to y'all the other day about how one seed produced a tree with so many branches, so many fruit in my life. Just, just one spoken word one spoken word, changed my life. And y'all, that was when I was seven years old, okay? Seven. I am pushing 50. 
and I'm in, still in the process of killing all the things that that produced. Because like I said, that one seed produced a tree with lots of branches and lots of fruit. Okay. So here's what happened in short. Um, favorite cousin, my favorite cousin. One day I was seven years old. We'd had a um, family reunion and had gone home. This was in the days of landlines with the, with the cords. This was even before cordless phones. And um, my cousin called for my sister. And so I had gone to get the phone in the den and I was going to, I was, I st stepped right outside the door and called my sister and she didn't hear me. And so I went back to pick up the phone to let my cousin know that I had to go get my sister. And I picked up the phone and I was like, hold on, keep holding on. I got to go, I got to go get her because she didn't hear me call her. And my cousin said, okay, but before I could put the phone down, she said to her sister, that's what she should have done the first time with a little fat tail. Okay, sounds like whatever, right? Y'all, that was her little fat tail. Changed the course of my life. The entire course of my life until this day. My cousin had no idea, number one, that I heard her. I don't feel that she would have tried to hurt me. It was just something said. I still love her to this day. Um, but it's one of my favorite cousins. And that thing, the enemy used, because that was a soft place in my heart for her. Um, and he just caught me off guard. He caught me off guard. And so what I found is that, and I remember hearing the Lord say this a long time ago, that a lot of our fights are steeped in deception. And so the enemy takes one thing we hear or one thing we see, and he tangles this great big web of deception over our lives. And he entangles us. Oh, entangle. Um, but... <laughs> The entanglement begins, um, and he does. He he wraps us with those lies and deception, okay? So just from, I started, and y'all, when I say we got to do the hard work, like we have to do the hard work now. This thing about um, our minds, y'all, we cannot try to put in the ground with all the junk all the contaminants, all the weeds, all the, why would we try to sow, put something in the ground in the midst of that and want that to grow up and be up? No, 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 no. We have got to clean this thing up, y'all. This thing about our thinking, this is our mental health. This is our emotional health. And we are responsible. Yes, it's a spiritual thing as well. Yes, it is. Um, but the, this, our emotions and our minds are a critical part. We have spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Spirit, soul, and body. If we're saved, our spirits, our spirits have been saved. Our mind is being saved, okay? The word tells us to renew our mind and your body will follow, okay? Um, But we got to work on this mind thing, y'all. We have to. So anyway, just as an example, that one little statement, because I've been sitting down, I encourage y'all sit down, take time, work through this thing, get quiet time. Be intentional. I've been hearing that word again over and over and over again today. Um, be intentional about this thing. You're going to have to be honest with yourself. Um, I'm finding that when there are what seems to be trivial things that come up that I remember, it's like, okay, God, what made me remember that? And in each case, there has been even as insignificant 
as it may have seemed, if I frame it right, I understand. So with her little fat tail, I started writing down some of the things that that one statement did to me. Okay. It took my innocence. I was seven years old. I didn't know anybody had an opinion of me. I did not. I was so happy-go-lucky. I just loved people. I loved people. Um, and so hearing that statement kind of, it took my innocence. It made me become self-centered. And that can be hard to say, but it made me become self-centered because everything after that was I. I wonder what, I and me, I wonder what they think of me. I wonder what I need to do. I, 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 I. Um, later on, I developed depression. Depression is such a self-centered disorder. Um, it's an issue, y'all, that depression is that way because it's such an inward look. Everything is about the person that's depressed. People don't do what they need them to do. Um, everything about it is I, I, I. Okay. So it did. It made me self-centered. It made my weight an issue because little fat tail, oh, I'm fat. And chances are, I would have slimmed on down. Most kids go through a little phase and then they begin to slim down. Um, but it made my weight an issue for me I, because I looked at myself differently. It made me aware that other people had opinions. Um, it defined me as fat. Before then, I was just Marcy. But with that, I was fat. I became extremely self-conscious. I was always wondering if somebody was looking at me, what they thought. I didn't feel like I was good enough or skinny enough or pretty enough. It brought about suspicion in me. And that's something I didn't even realize until this morning. Um, it brought out suspicion because it made me always wonder about other people, what they thought. Do they feel the same way about me? It broke my spirit. Um, that tree, oh, this is this is something that I wrote like in the midst of that. That tree fed off of me. I told you that seed was planted and y'all, it did. It became a tree. 42 years that thing grew, that seed grew for 42 years and it sucked the life out of me. It drained my energy and my zest. And even um, earlier in the, well, last week or sometime or the first week was when I said, I am highly motivated. I'm highly energized. And I told y'all about the times when it just seemed like I was zapped. And for the first time today, I realized that now, and I last week I realized that okay, this is something the devil has been trying to tell me to make me believe that to keep me out of the promise that it, that that is not who I am. Um, that that was a lie he was trying to get me to believe. Well, y'all, I believe that much like mental health issues that develop from trauma, such as bipolar disorder multiple personality um, disorders or whatever, there are physiolog physiological changes that occur, like as the mental issues persist. Um, and it may seem like I'm off. I don't have any data to prove anything. All I have is a revelation of the Holy Spirit regarding my life. You don't have to eat this if you don't want to. I am taking what he told me. Today, for the first time, I'm realizing that the issues that I have regarding energy that I've had regarding energy, vitality, zest, excitement, all those have to do with the long-term damage 
of the trauma of that statement. Remember I told you before then, eyes clear. I mean, I could I could produce the pictures and show you. I mean, just happy-go-lucky. And from that time forward, I, I don't even see how people would let me take a picture looking like, I mean, y'all, I have pictures where I'm with my cousins and it's just, I mean, dead. It zapped me. It took, because... It, that initial statement planted the seed, but the negative things that happened after that, the stuff I overheard people say about me or that they said directly to me because I went through, oh my gosh, I don't know how many years of extreme bullying that led me into this deep, deep, dark depression. So the statement was made at seven. That was the place of the trauma at seven. By 12 years old, I was on a suicide mission. By 12 years old, I wanted out. And from 12 to 24, I suffered from extreme depression for 12 years extreme depression. God healed me of the depression. That is no longer my issue. But y'all, I'm still getting stuff out of my ground. I'm still, okay. So y'all, even me sitting here <laughs> talking, me sitting here in front of you is a miracle in and of itself. I don't know if you understand how huge that is. It is a miracle that I can sit here. Furthermore, I'm allowing myself to make mistakes. Like part of the reason I would never do anything, like just, I didn't want to look stupid. I didn't, I didn't want to look stupid. I didn't, I didn't want to make mistakes. I wanted everything I did to be perfect or I wasn't going to do it at all. That's a problem because perfection is unattainable and doing nothing is a problem. So the enemy wanted me to be polarized on that, y'all. So the fact that I can sit here, I can make a mistake, I can sound whatever and not care. Oh my God. And then y'all, you see my hair? <laughs> y'all, Like wigs and uh, crochets and braids and whatever. And I have nothing against that. But the Lord just told me earlier this summer, like, yeah, when I started trying with my natural hair and one day I looked and I was like, oh, I kind of like, he was like, you might as well embrace what I gave you. And he told me, come out of hiding, come out of hiding. And I was like, hmm. Come out of hiding. I could not accept any of this. I couldn't accept any of this, okay? Like, and I'm on, I, I will say on this camera that I am going to lose, I'm already in process, but I'm going to lose 125 pounds. And a lot of it is going to be because I'm getting all this all these people and all this junk out of my system. I am going to lose weight. I, there was a time when I was saying, oh, I'm, I'm going to be fit and fine. Oh, yeah, I want to be fit and fine. <laughs> that was my little thing, by 50. I'm going to be fit and fine. And one day I was saying it to myself now. I was saying it to myself, oh, yeah, I'm going to be fit. This was a while back, like last year or something. Yeah, I'm going to be fit and fine. And the Holy Ghost said, fine for what? Fine for what? What? So what's your motive? What's your motive for wanting to lose weight? What's your motive for? And I can sit here right now and with everything in me say, fine, whatever. I want to be fit for kingdom use. I want to be fit for God to be able to send me wherever he wants to send me. I want to be fit 
in order to be able to keep up with the pace of what God is about to do in my life. Okay. So I'm just saying this whole thing with like, it manifested. When I told y'all the other day that I asked to God, when asked God, when did that start? I was talking about the wait. Where did that come from, God? So when did that start? And he said, you just fulfilled prophecy. And immediately, I knew he was talking about when I was seven years old. That was a word that was spoken over my life, y'all. And for the last 42 years, I have manifested that prophecy. It's just like when people be like, look at her walk fast, tail. Look at her. She act, why you dressed like a hoe? Why you, you know, and sometimes we think that it's repeated, repeated um, hearing of that. mm 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 mm, -mm. If you are positioned in a place, if you're vulnerable, if you and that seed is dropped, oh, if you don't catch it, oh, it can wreak havoc. So, like I said, I don't have any proof proof that even with my energy level and all of that, um, that it came from it. But y'all, I'm telling you, and the reason I said it, just like bipolar. That, if I'm not mistaken, and I, I don't know all about it, but that other stem, it's like it develops almost like an out. Okay, like, oh, I need an out. Um, like I said, think about multiple, when, when people have multiple personalities, and I don't know all the terminology for it, but y'all, like these things develop. And so then... Like over time, something happens. It there, there may be a shoot, but it's like, okay, how do you heal that thing? I serve a God, the God of miracles. Okay, so I believe that as I clean up this ground for this next seed to be planted, my energy level is going to go. I want to say through the roof. Cause I don't want to, I don't want that. I want to swing the other way now. I want it to be right where God wants it to be. I want my motivation, my energy, my energy to be so positive and so on point and so contagious. Okay. Um. So back to some of the stuff that it caused. It produced deep rooted fears. It made rejection easy to attach to me because I felt nobody wanted me. Nobody wanted to be bothered with me. It wasn't true. But but back then, that picture that the enemy was painting said that to me. It wasn't true. But he made that what I believed. Um, oh, Lord. People pleasing became the name of my game. I wanted everybody to be okay with Marcy. I wanted everybody to like Marcy, all that. Mm -mm. Um, I was angry at myself, very angry. I felt like, you stupid, you can't do nothing right. Nobody don't want to be around you. Nobody. So I had a lot of negative self-talk towards myself. I was angry at my very existence. Um it brought about negative self-image, self-doubt, self-loathing. And I told you that that sadness turned into depression. I heard um, Dr. Anita Phillips say so aptly, if y'all, there's a, I'm going to try to leave the link to this message in, um, in my, in like the description for today. Um, Dr. Anita Phillips spoke for Bishop Jakes one Sunday morning. And um, the thing that she said, the only thing that can stop your running mind is your running mouth. That was good to me. I had never put those words to it, but y'all, that's how I have felt for a long time. Like I have to talk my way out. When I talk, it makes things come, come into view. Um, so I know there's no way I could say it all today. I don't know. Um, how God is going to finish unraveling this thing for us and revealing this thing for us, but I know he is. Um, that's what I have for you today. I, I pray that you will, let's pray. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God, I come right now just thanking you, Father, for how you're clearing up our vision, how you are bringing us to 2020 vision. 
And Lord, I thank you for the words you gave me the other day that said um, how we say hindsight is 2020 vision. And hindsight is 2020 vision for the last season of our lives. But hindsight becomes 2020 vision. That becomes foresight for where we're headed. So when 2020 vision happens after a thing, yeah, it's hindsight. But once we get the message, once once we learn the lesson, it becomes foresight for the next season. And so, God, we thank you that we are stepping into this next season in 2020 vision. We're seeing everything for what it is, God, and we're grateful for that. Lord, we thank you for whew, giving us the courage to face the things that have stopped us. We thank you for giving us the courage to kill the weeds. We thank you for giving us the courage to revisit the trauma, not to stay there, but so that you can heal us. No longer will we simply move on. No longer will we just get over it. It will be gone. It will be as if it never happened. Not that we don't take the, the experience and allow you to speak through it because that's what anoints us, that we survived it. But we won't let it rest in our lives. It is past. We can remove it and still know that it happened. Um, but we can, we can take the claws out of that thing. We can take it from taking up space in our garden, in our thinking, in our hearts. We can remove that thing. We can remove it. And so God, I thank you. We can't undo it, but we can we can move it so that it's not doing the damage. So God, I thank you right now just for, for helping us through this time, for being with us, for being a comforter, for, for giving us wisdom, for speaking to us. And God, we're going to give you all the glory for what you're doing in our lives. We thank you that this time we won't, we won't try to put your word on top of what's already in there. We're going to take the time to dig out so we can have a fresh place, a cultivated place for this seed to take root and grow. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. My declaration today, I am faith-filled. I am aware of what is in my mind, in my heart. I intentionally kill every weed and remove any hard places from my ground. I am alert and responsive anytime a negative seed tries to find its way into the garden of my mind. I instantly recognize what doesn't feel like God and I cast it down and refuse for it to contaminate my life. I am doing the hard work required to make my heart and mind ready to receive this next seed from God. This has been One Moment with Marcy. Thank you for stopping by. I want to offer you, if, if you're seeing this and you need some help in this process, inbox me, send me a message, whatever. Um, I'm in my own process, but I trust God that he can give me just the right thing to help you through your process if it's needed. But y'all commit to the work, commit to it. It's going to be worth it all. Okay, I'll be back tomorrow with another moment of momentum producing motivation. Until then, be encouraged. And remember, you got to flutter until you can fly. But flying is in your future.